How do I cast a demon or demons out of a person? By yourself, through your flesh, you have no power. Hey guys, I got this question from actually a lot of you guys asking me, Daniel, how do I help someone who is demon possessed? How do I cast a demon or demons out of a person? Well, let me first give you an overview and then go into more detail because the detail is extremely important. If you want to help someone who's demon possessed, you need to know what you're doing. So here's the quick overview. Number one, you need to be a real Christian and have no unrepented sin in your life. Two, make sure the person is really demon possessed and is not just a psychological problem or a health issue. Three, make sure the person wants to be freed and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Four, get them comfortable. Five, record it. Six, identify the sin that gave the demon the legal right to come into the person. Seven, tell the person to ask God's forgiveness to take away the legal right. Eight, rebuke the demons in the name of Jesus until they leave. Nine, help the person to grow spiritually. Make them a disciple. Ten, pray for protection. All right, so let me explain. Number one, you need to be a real Christian and have no unrepented sin in your life. You cannot, in fact, it is impossible to help someone who's demon-possessed if you are not a real Christian. It is not only impossible, it is dangerous. And the demons can and probably will attack you. Look at this example. Acts 19 verse 13. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists undertook to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul proclaims seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Sceva were doing this. But the evil spirit answered them, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I recognize. But who are you? And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them, mastered all of them and overpowered them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Now, the reason why a normal person, someone who's not a real reborn Christian, cannot help someone who's demon possessed is because by yourself, through your flesh, you have no power. We can only help people if we have God's Spirit in us because we're in spiritual warfare and we can only cast demons out through God's power, God's Spirit in us. And God Himself gave us the authority to do it. Luke 10 verse 18, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. And James 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will, not maybe, will flee from you. Now we also see the example of Jesus, how he sent the disciples out to free people from demons. Mark 6 verse 7, And he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them the authority over the unclean spirits. Now when the 72 disciples came back telling Jesus, they were surprised that even demons are subject to them under the name of Jesus, meaning Jesus gave them the authority. They can only cast out demons through the power of Jesus Christ. Now, if you are a Christian, but you have unrepented sin in your life, you need to go to God and ask him to forgive you, to clean you, to make you white as snow before you start with spiritual warfare, before you try to pray for people who have demons in them. Remember, John wrote this to believers. 1 John 1 verse 8 says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just 
to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When you sin as a reborn Christian, a child of God, you quench and grieve the Holy Spirit within you. And you need the help of the Holy Spirit with spiritual warfare, with deliverance. Ephesians 4 verse 30 says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 19 says, Do not quench the Spirit. All right, let's move on to number two. Make sure the person is really demon-possessed and it's not a psychological problem. Now, the key here is to let the Holy Spirit guide you. This will require discernment. I'll explain why in just a minute. There's something else I need to mention here. Don't go alone. Take a brother or sister in Christ with you to help you or a team. And then when you arrive, don't be hasty. Don't just jump into things. You need to find out what's going on. So make the person relaxed. Get a cup of coffee or if you're not a coffee person, just some tea and sit down. Talk about it. Ask them to determine, is this psychological, a health issue, or is this demon possession? Ask them things like, when did this start? How do you know this start? What are the symptoms? All of these kind of questions. And it takes discernment because demons can also cause sickness, psychological problems, or health issues. So let the Holy Spirit guide you. And if you are uncertain, start to pray and say, God, please reveal to us what is going on here through the power of your Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10 says, These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. Now, usually it will be clear. For example, the demon will know when you are a child of God and they might manifest. Sometimes you don't even need to pray to, to really see what's going on because it's just going to be clear. For example, the demon might manifest and start blaspheming God and uh, might even tell you it's a demon and that it will not leave this house. The house meaning the body of the person. Demons can see other demons in other people and also the Spirit of God. The demons knew clearly who Jesus was. They didn't speak to him yet. He didn't speak to them. They knew. When they saw him, they instantly knew this is Jesus. Mark 3 verse 11. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. If you are a true child of God, the demons will see God in you. And that is the sign. If you are led by the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit is in you, leading you, and you walking, acting, living, talking through the Spirit, that is the sign that you truly are a reborn Christian, as we know from Scripture. Romans 8 verse 14, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Now, some demons, they like to hide. They don't want to come out. They don't want to reveal themselves. We know that some demons even pretend to be angels of light or even the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14, And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. They hide. They can hide even in churches, pretending to do the work of the Holy Spirit. We see that we're following in the Spirit, slaying in the Spirit, and giving people certain gifts of the Spirit. And it's usually used to mislead people to stray away from His Word. Especially in churches where the truth of the Word is not being preached anymore. But when a preacher or pastor preaches with the power of the Holy Spirit, a lot of the demons can't take it, so they manifest. Or when they are in a study group where true reborn Christians read the Word or do spiritual activities like praying, singing, worshiping God, or speaking about the fundamental truths of Scripture, like we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are more than conquerors. Demons do not want to be there where God is worshipped in spirit and in truth. And then they will usually manifest. But even before it comes to just them taking over manifesting, they can make the person they possess very tired to fall asleep or they feel nauseous, wanting to vomit. So they leave the church. 
or get severe headaches in church, or when they really cannot take it anymore, the demon will take over the body and scream or try to run out of the church. Now, demon can cause severe health problems. Trying to keep this person away from the church, just keeping him in the house or her in the house. Do you remember the mute person who couldn't speak because of the demon? Matthew 9 verse 32. As they were going away, behold, a demon-oppressed man who was mute was brought to him. When the demon had been cast out, the mute man spoke. Now, if you're ever unsure, all you got to do is remember you're not alone. Just pray to the Holy Spirit to ask Him to help you, to guide you, and to reveal to you what is going on. Also, it's always a good idea to get a brother or sister in Christ who is a doctor or a psychologist to join you. Now, let's move on to number three. 